Well, Dave takes it on, looks into all things EV with an emphasis on charging. Recently, Tesla launched their V4 Supercharger, which is specifically designed for non-Tesla drivers. And here we take a look at progress to date and expectations for the future. Well, it was only two months ago that Tesla replaced the V3 Charger as the standard, uh, rated at 250 kilowatts and equipped with a CCS2 plug with their new V4 Charger. This one's also rated at 250 kilowatts, also with a single CCS2 plug, but is labelled as future-proof. So what is it? Why is it different, if it is, and how is installation progressing? Well, a recent visit to Trentham Gardens near Stoke-on-Trent allowed me to have a close look and try one out for myself. Immediately noticeable is the LCD screen and contactless terminal for payment, very neatly located at the rear. Also prominent was the extra long cable. Well, we Tesla owners have no problems. Our payment is processed automatically when we plug in the car and the charger point on all Teslas is at the rear left. So all the chargers are accessed by reversing into them, meaning the charger is right next to the charger port. Only a very short cable is needed. And that applies even to the soon-to-be-launched Cybertruck scheduled for uh, 30th of November. Well, we Tesla owners do not need longer cables, nor the display screens, nor the contactless. But as Tesla opens up more charger to non-Tesla drivers, it was found to be immediately a problem to cars with their charger port somewhere else, maybe on the rear right or in the middle front. The existing cable simply didn't reach leading to some cars having to park in one bay and then use the cable from the next bay, taking up two bays. The longer cables are therefore specifically for non-Tesla owners. Which now raises the question, well, how many are already installed and how many are planned? Well, a quick look at the Tesla charging map. This is available to all people on their website. You first of all click the charging button, then superchargers and click find. This shows all facilities for Teslas in the whole world. So first you need to home in on your own country. Type UK into the destination, press OK, enter, and you see the whole of the UK. But there's a mass of buttons. So simply deselect the ones you don't want, like service centres, destination chargers, leaving just one unclicked, which is superchargers open to non-Teslas. Well, we currently see 30 supercharger locations already open to all EV drivers, and many of these have the V4s. That is a huge increase from less than just 10 open to all EV drivers just a few months ago. The rollout is moving at a really rapid pace. We have a really good scattering of chargers already, ranging from Inverness right in the north, right down to Folkestone in Kent. This open to all network is already larger than most other charging network companies like Fastnet and Ionity, each with little over 100 chargers in total. And it's even competing with GridServe at this very early stage. The really interesting thing is, unlike networks like Instavolt and Osprey, Tesla installs a minimum of eight chargers, but normally 12 to 20 at each location, while some have over 30 individual 250 kilowatt chargers, and none of these share power. You always have the full 250 kilowatts available to you if your car can use it. Tesla has already opened more than 300 chargers to non-Tesla owners. And this is only the beginning. The numbers mean that the availability is now enormous. The power means that the turnover or throughput is really fast. Queues do happen, but are usually quite short. And the price will come as a very welcome shock. Unlike the Instavolt 85 pence and the Austrian Bray 79 pence and BP Pulse 85 pence. Tesla offers a split tariff, peak and off peak, with off peak prices varying slightly from site to site, but hovering between the 35p 
and the 50p per kilowatt range. And this is without any membership. This is standard price to non-Tesla owners. If you regularly charge your Tesla superchargers, you might decide to become a member. You do pay £10.99 a month, but the price is dropped by around 25%. So just two charges a month will show a clear profit. Well, if we now look at the future, we can see that the grey locations on the map show sites of future locations that are either already under construction or planned to be open before the end of 2024, i.e. the next 12 months or so. I count 30 of these. And if each of these has a sim similar number of charges per location and each of these is open to non-Tesla drivers, this could add more than 300 charges open to all drivers within the next 12 months. Now, it's interesting to note Tesla operates a software program specifically monitoring their superchargers. And this analyzes usage and predicts where bottlenecks already exist or are likely to exist in the future. These locations are given top priority. Why would they install elsewhere where the demand is lower? Well, Rugby Services on the M6 Motor Services is a classic example. It is still at this stage, I'm afraid, Tesla only, but they did have 12 250-kilowatt V3 chargers, but they were always busy. Well, not always overcrowded, usually only really busy in queues at peak times, but they were regularly busy. So they recently added a further 16 V3s. Well, this was before the launch of the V4s, um, and uh, rugby queues have now just about disappeared. I specifically went there at peak time, uh, five o'clock on a weekday afternoon, and there were no queues at all. More than half of the bays were empty at any one time. Well, the future's looking really good. Tesla's already opened more charges to non-Tesla drivers than Ionity and Fastnet and Osprey combined expanding the charging locations available to them significantly. When the planned superchargers open up, that could easily double again. Now, if you don't like Tesla or Elon Musk, then don't use them. But at 35 pence per kilowatt hour off peak at some superchargers without membership, you would be absolutely crazy to go and visit a competitor who's going to charge you 85 pence. Well, thanks for watching. I will do regular updates on this. I'm Dave.